chemistry form 3, namely the gas laws. Uh, this law, as we study it, we have to look at uh, the origin of uh, this kind of information. We are thinking about scientists like uh, Robert Boyle. Uh, Robert Boyle was an Irish scientist who lived in the 1600s. And it's actually from uh, his experiments that we get Boyle's law, which actually preceded the ideal gas equation. And we are going to work on this in a number of ways, and we'll use Boyle's law to prove uh, something that will help us to also come up with a general gas equation. Um, we we'll get a little bit of history along the way, which is uh, always fun. Boyle was experimenting with gases, and he had a big J-tube set up in the entrance of his house, which I'm sure his wife was thrilled about. Uh, like some of uh, the present-day wives who might have thrown it away as a piece of trash, he trapped some gas in that J-tube, and he filled the bottom of the tube, uh, but with a little bit of mercury, which trapped that gas on the closed side, because mercury is a pretty dense liquid, and the gas has a hard time moving through it. So it trapped a little bit of that gas on the other side. This left the open side exposed to the atmosphere here, so that you have the pressure of the gas on one side and the pressure of the atmosphere on the other. You know that they are pressing down with it with the same amount of pressure because, as he started, current uh, transcript segment, height of the mercury was the same on both sides. Things got really interesting when he added a bit more mercury because now that the two levels didn't equalize, instead they were offset. What this meant was that the, the, the top gas pressure over here was greater than the atmospheric pressure, such that the gas pressure was equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the fluid pressure of the height difference. You can think that the gas is pushing down on this part of the mercury with the same force or with the same pressure as the atmosphere pushing down over here plus this bit of fluid over there pushing down. Now he added a bit more mercury, which compressed the gas even more, making its volume less. And he found that there was an even greater offset in the two fluid heights. He correctly took this to mean that the gas was existing, exerting even more pressure, because now the gas pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure, 17.5 cubic inches, and his pressure was 12 inches of mercury. As he filled the J-tube with a little bit more mercury, he had a volume of 7.2 and a pressure of 16 inches of mercury. As he continued to fill it, he got a volume of 70.7 with a pressure of 20 inches. 48, uh, that is uh, the pressure of 20 inches. He continued, to, he continued for a volume of 8.8 .8 and a pressure of 24 inches. And continued and got 44.2 and 32. And as he kept going, he got 35.5, 35.3 cubic inches and 40 inches of mercury. And then the last value was 29.1 inches of mercury after. That is the volume that he had compressed it down to, and 48 inches of mercury for the pressure. What he did is he plotted this data, and he graphed pressure as a function of volume. He had a great, he had a graph with the pressure as a function of volume, that is he had a graph with pressure as a function of volume. And, and uh, if we look at our pressure, about the highest it gets is 48 inches. So we'll make the top 50, and the middle part you can say is 25 as a kind of benchmark and if you look at volume uh, the highest value is 117 so we we'll make it 100 and we'll go a little bit over and uh, and we can kind of fill in our graph so 50 25 and 75 cubic inches for volume we see that when our volume is 117.5 our pressure is 12 also that will be right about here and we see that as our volume is 87.2, our pressure goes a little bit to 16. And when we when we have we have our volume at 70.7, our pressure is about 20. So that will be about right there. When our volume is just about 60 here, we have a pressure of 24. And as our volume goes to 44.2, we have uh, around 32. That will be about right here, 42, and then 35.3 for the volume. Okay, 35.3 for the volume is about 40 for the pressure. Right under a pressure of uh, 48, our volume will be about 29. Also about right there. What we have when we plot pressure as a function of volume is we have hyperbola. What we see is that as the volume drops by half, about 50 to 100, the pressure essentially doubles. 
And as you go from 50 to 25 for the volume, you go from 25 to 50 for the pressure. About there, we have an inverse relationship for the pressure and the volume. So if we graph volume, and as a function of the inverse of pressure, we get this graph. of all of our pressure, 1 over 12, the inverse of 12 will be 0 .06, 0 0.08. 1 over 16 for the inverse of 16 will be about 0 0.0625. And if we continue finding the inverse values of these pressures, we'll get 0 0.05 for 20, and then 24 will be 0 0.042. About 1 over 32 will be 0 0.03125, and 40 will be 0 0.025. 1 divided by 40 is 0 0.025, and then 1 over 48 is 0 0.0208. You can populate our graph with these values. About the highest inverse pressure value we have is 0 0.08 and about the lowest is 0 0.02. So we can feel that in here. We are still working with the same values for volume. So the, the highest is a little bit over 100. And then we can put in 50 and 25 and 75. 40, uh, when, we, when our volume is uh, 117.5 cubic inches, the inverse pressure could be about 0 0.08. As we go down, 87.2 would be 0 0.0625, and 70.7 would be 0 0.05, right in the middle there. And then 58.8, just about 60, would be 0 0.042, and 44.2 would be 0 0.0325. Uh, 5.3, that is 35.3 would be 0 0.025, and 29.1 would be 0 0.0208. This isn't a perfectly clean graph, but we do see that we, when we graph volume as a function of the inverse of pressure, uh, we get a straight line. If we write this straight line graph as an equation, it will be y is equal to mx plus b. That is the equation for this graph where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. Our y-intercept here is 0, uh, so all we really need is y is equal to mx. Well, in our graph, our y-value is our volume. And our x value is the inverse of our pressure. Let's fill that in there. If we call if we call our slope k instead of m, we just use a different letter, then you will get v is equal to k times one over p. Multiplying both sides by p will give us uh, p v is equal to k. But in other words, the product of the volume and the pressure of a gas is a constant value, just like we see in the general gas equation. Let's test this out. You can stop.